What is going on miners and welcome back to the Hobbyist Miner channel. So today we're in for a little bit of a treat. Um, as you guys know on the channel, we do a lot of four gig cards and we do a lot of second hand cards. I mean, uh, two of these are, are, are broken bad uh, and we are looking at getting them sent away to get repaired. Um, but one of the things I wanted to talk about today is the fact of when you do get in a second hand card like our XFX R9, 380x one of the things a rule of thumb that i have that i like to do is strip it down clean it and then also replace the thermal paste on them a lot of the times these are never ever replaced um now i've gone through uh a buddy of mine did not me and had spent the night hanging out here drinking beers and replace all the thermal paste all 12 of these cards uh, as well as some of these other ones here. And so for me, it is a good rule of thumb, but I'll be honest with you as a community, as we talked about, like I just started this in December, this is a hobby for me, we're learning, we're growing, and we're mining, just like the banner says up above on YouTube. So this card will be my very first card that I have replaced the thermal paste on. I've done it a million times building out rigs uh, for gaming PCs, but never on a GPU. So let me go ahead and get set up here, show you guys what we're going to use to clean this, and uh, we'll do this for the very first time. Alrighty guys, so we have a card that you guys have seen on the channel uh, here in front of us. This is the XFX R9380X. Uh, this is a card that I got second hand uh, for $135, um, spoke with the owner. He actually let me know, and he was up front, let me know that uh, he didn't mind with it. It was used in a media cabinet for years. Uh, and that the thermal paste has never been replaced on it. So what we're going to do today is we're going to go ahead and replace the thermal paste on it. Uh, we'll take a look at the pads, see if they need to be replaced. If they need to be, that'll be another video for us to do. Um, so our next step here is to show you some things that we are using. Um, we have just a traditional screwdriver, some of our mini screwdrivers based off of what size we need. Um, we also have a magnetic tray um, or dish for the screws because if you're like me you always knock them over and lose them uh, so we do have a, uh, that readily available we'll keep that away from the actual board uh, in addition to that we do have rubbing alcohol uh, we do have a few different types of thermal paste today we'll be using arctic silver you can use whatever you prefer uh, in that regard and then of course we have some paper towels uh, so to go ahead and get started uh, we're just going to uh, flip this card over here. So let's go ahead and do that. And our next step is we are going to remove the uh, small screws uh, around the outside here. It looks like there's one here and one here. Uh, so we're going to undo those first. And then these are the ones that are actually on the heat sink. We'll remove those second. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, get started here. Now you can see these actually have the sticker over top. Um, when you remove these, it will void your warranty. Uh, in our situation, this is multiple years old. There is no warranty left available on it. I have no concerns. Alrighty, so we have all of our screws on the back entirely removed. Our next step is to go ahead and um, kind of pull off the heat sink slowly, see if we have any uh, cables, fan, most of the time you have a fan cable attached, uh, and then we'll see what the damage is. Okay. Alrighty. So, uh, this was screwed in, uh, this was a, a heat sink that was on uh, the front here, so we'll make sure that we put that back. It was actually right here, uh, a heat sink available covering up uh, the chips here. Um, so we'll make sure that that goes back on. We're gonna put that aside. Uh, so as we can see, kind of taking a look at this, uh, there's very little thermal paste left between the two here. We have the die um, here, uh, and it actually isn't spread too, too bad, so not too difficult. So. Our next step is, because we could fold this over, it's going to work out really well. We don't even have to disconnect the fan here, but sometimes you need to based off of how it's designed. So our next step is to go ahead and clean off the heatsink. Then we're going to clean off the die using rubbing alcohol. 
uh, being gentle, doing it right. We may need to grab some Q-tips here to get this cleaned up. We'll kind of see what it looks like once we're done. Uh, but let's go ahead and get started here. So this is where we're going to go ahead and grab some paper towel. And uh, we're going to fold this sucker up. And then we're going to put some rubbing alcohol on it and clean this off here. Oh, we made a little mess. Look at that. Look at that. We'll clean that up in just a second. Um, so let's go ahead and clean this off here. Look at that. It's just coming off like it's just so dry. And this is the stuff they use directly from the factory. Not the best of quality, uh, but it gets the job done. And you got to think it's been years that this has been on here. Try to make sure that you get, you, you keep it clean, get it all cleaned up. Let's go ahead, we're gonna do this. Uh, let me fold this inside out here. Get this looking pretty. Make sure you have a trash can nearby um, for this. The thermal paste, man, when it gets on your hands or gets on things, it will ruin it. So make sure you don't get it on your clothes. Uh, I do have some alcohol pads here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and use that after we got the to get some of the little stuff cleaned up. Um, so we just have these little alcohol pads. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just use that to make sure we get anything that we might have missed. With the paper towel, also to get rid of any pieces of the paper towel that may be left behind on there. And let me actually clean up our little spot over here. There we go. Good to go there. Okay, uh, so our next step is now to clean off uh, our dye. So we're gonna clean it up in the same manner. My guess is we are gonna need a Q-tip and dipping it in a little bit of rubbing alcohol in order to get around the edges here uh, to do this properly. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, clean this off with paper towel first, and then we'll kind of follow up directly uh, after that. The, uh, you can see here on the heat sink that we were just looking at, it actually has a pad on the bottom. It's in good condition, so we're not going to do anything with that here. Try this again with the rubbing alcohol, round two. Trying not to make a mess. I just got a little close to the edge there last time. All right, put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and clean this off here. Just being gentle. It's almost like a gelatin now. Um, a hardened gelatin. It's the farthest thing from moist. So we're cleaning off the dye right now. We can see a lot of thermal paste around the outside uh, of this here. So as you can see, the top of the dye looks great. But around the edges is where it doesn't look so good. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some Q-tips and I'll be back here in just a minute. Alrighty guys, we are back. We got ourselves a handful of Q-tips. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some rubbing alcohol in the cap and then I'm gonna use that almost like paint to go ahead and dip in as we need it here. And so our next step is to dip the rubbing alcohol in and then go ahead and just go around the edges here. Try to get this cleaned up. It's really caked in here. You can tell this, uh, yeah, look at that. It's like breaking apart and everything. Wow. It's just breaking apart like dried paint is what it is. So you almost have to br like push it. You see how we're like pushing it here? You almost have to push it to get it to break apart. Look at that, wow. This card's got some age to it, definitely. Um, let's see. Trying to get rid of these really big pieces first. Try to clean this up. Look at that. It's literally, oh my goodness. That's crazy. All right, let me try uh, a piece of paper towel. See if that'll get this up. I'm trying not to get my fingers in there. All right, that picked up a decent amount off of there, which is good. Come on, get out of there. Okay, 
I am going to have to clean some of that up around there. There's still some little pieces. I don't want to have too many of these little pieces going everywhere. You see them? I don't want them to let loose. Uh, you don't want them getting on your board a ton. Uh, so, just trying to make sure that they are not uh, getting in places that we don't want them to be, you know. There's a piece right here, like lodged. Trying to get that out. There we go. Just using this little alcohol pad, trying to get in here. There we go. And yeah, I, I'm being like super anal. I know that. Um, just want to make sure it's perfect. You know, take your time with stuff like this. You don't need to rush it. There's no rush. If you don't have the time, don't do it. Do it right, you know. There's these little pieces. I'm trying to get out of here. The, um, the alcohol pad is definitely working really well. Really well. You almost need like a little rubber Q-tip. They have some of those rubber Q-tips that you can use to help kind of push this stuff out of here. Um, but so far, so good. Okay, so we're just gonna do one last cleanup around the outside here uh, to make sure we're good, make sure we didn't leave anything kind of floating around anywhere, you know. Just nice. One last little cleaning there. Okay, cool. So I think we're good to go. In that regard, we're gonna discard our rubbing alcohol. Uh, that was in our cap. Put that aside for another rainy day. Um, all right, so our next step is to apply thermal paste. Um, I do not, I, I recommend uh, like a little paintbrush if you guys have one. I do not have one on me, so for this video, uh, we're not gonna do it with the paintbrush, but a friend of mine recommended it, and I, and I, and I think it's a great idea. Um, so what he recommended, and it, it, looked, it looked really well, was you start out with like a little pea, and then you take the paintbrush and you paint the entire die. Just to be safe, you know? Just to be safe. So in our situation though, we're just gonna do a, a, a P here and uh, you know, kind of be good to go uh, from there. Now, if this pushes out and runs on, uh, let's get this done real quick here. Okay, so we did our little P there, almost looks like a little Hershey kiss. Um, if this expands outward and, go, and goes into this area, I don't have any concerns there, that's okay. You just don't want this ever touching anywhere else, guys. So keep that in mind as you guys are doing this. As I said, take your time, do it right, uh, and it should pay off uh, in the end. So our next step is to go ahead and uh, kind of get this back in order uh, the way that we had it. Um, so we are gonna take this down this way, and you, you kind of don't wanna do this more than once, to be honest with you, or else you're gonna make quite the mess. So we're gonna set it up like this, and we're kind of going to get everything and it's a little hard for you guys to see but we're just going to try to get this back in place with touching the heat sink the least amount of po as possible if that makes sense so i think this is going to be the best avenue now that i look at it so we're lined up where we need to be right now we're going to worry about our uh this second here uh, let's go ahead and get some screws back in place um just to get things you know, we're just going to lightly get these screwed in. We'll tighten them once we're all done. We just want to get something holding this in place. Okay, definitely struggled longer than I needed to there. I was using the wrong screw. 
uh, it was sliding a little bit on the heat sink so we I found doing these first would probably be best so just things you learn along the way right you know just like we had talked about this is my first time doing it so uh, we're gonna learn as we go and if you guys have any recommendations please make sure you post them in chat I would appreciate that uh, anything you spot where we can improve upon anything like that would be awesome all right so those are in let me go ahead and get this heat sink now back up underneath and get these screws in so give us one second here okay so just after 15 minutes uh, we are set and good to go uh, our thermal paste has been applied uh, i'm not seeing any issues everything came went back together really well um, and uh, so now you know as i said we purchased this second hand um, so I recommend doing this on any cards that you do purchase secondhand. While you're in there, if you see any of the pads, check the pads. If they look like ripped sponges or dried out or deteriorating, um, go ahead and replace those as well. Other than that, guys, that'll do it for today's video on how to replace the thermal paste on your GPU. Every card will be different, especially based off of if they have a, a rear shroud on them or they have uh, additional fan cables or things like that. So take your time with it. Um, other than that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for joining me for my first time replacing the thermal paste on a GPU. As you guys can see, it's not too hard. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.